now I'm going to go over some of the few lures that I like to use uh, in deep clear water lakes. For those of you who do not know, I have uh, fished Dale Hollow Lake in Tennessee, one of the best places to fish for lunk or smallmouth um, in the U.S. So uh, I'm going to show you how I fished this personally when I went out with uh, Greg, who uh, knows this lake like the back of his hand. We actually went night fishing for smallmouth, and we used some of these techniques also some other techniques that I personally like for deep clear water lakes I'll be sharing today. A few things that I want to start off with is hair jigs. How you can take advantage of these types of jigs. A lot of people think, oh, you know, a basic bass jig has to be a regular jig such as this one right here. I'll show you an example of what a lot of people think when they hear the word jig. You know, you, you think a basic jig just like this one right here, a wide gap hook with a trailer on the back, a uh, pumpkin color, you know. Simple and easy, a lot of people think this is what a what a jig is, but really it can mean anything. It can mean a hair jig, it can mean a marabou jig, and just because it's a hair jig and it doesn't look like the traditional bass rigs, jigs, it doesn't mean it's not gonna catch large mouth or small mouth. One of my favorite cl uh, clear deep water l lures right here, this is a Punisher 1 -fourth, 1 fourth ounce jig right here. It's got this uh, flat head which is gonna enable it to go across the top of seaweed, anything from brush. Um, it's a very versatile jig. It's got a simple weed guard at the top right here. I don't know if you can see that's just a simple wire. It's a very old fashioned hand tied jig. Um, one of my favorites out there, Punisher Lures, it makes a lot of great jigs. Um, I like the color of the fact that it almost looks like it's injured. And it's, you know, this watermelon color is just perfect. I've also got another one of my favorite colors which is a purple bluish color. This one looks a little bit more different. So it's a uh, a little bit heavier one and it's got the two weed guards right here which is going to allow it just to slide across brush and mainly what you want to do when you're deep water fishing uh, for smallmouth and largemouth is you want to get right up above those weed beds uh, what that's going to do is when the sun starts to come down or when the sun starts to come up you're going to be twitching this or dragging it on, very, on the very top of the weed beds you're not going to be totally at the bottom yet you're going to be dragging it across um, so what that's going to do is you're going to get those bass from inside of the weed bed to come up and look at the silhouette of, the silhouette of that lure. Now, if you guys probably have fished a Dale Hall, you know what I'm talking about. A lot of the guys who have fished this are, are recognize what I'm talking about already. Mainly, I'm going to go over one of our favorite rigs to use down in Dale Hollow and other clear water lakes. I've personally fished this rig before in Illinois waters, uh, not only Tennessee. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, heavy duty hair jig right here, so it's very heavy, it's going to get it down there deep. Mainly when you want to fish with this kind of this kind of jigs, you're fishing 30 to 25 feet of water, uh, depending on where the small mouth are, where the large mouth are. I'm going to take this, I'm going to take this Zoom Crazy Chunk Legs um, right here, it's a sapphire blue, and mainly what this is going to do is it's going to show up great at night, um, or in low light conditions, believe it or not, the silhouette, silhouette sticks out very well. I'm just going to pull back that weed guard, and I'm going to stick it right through there. I'm not going to slide it through like you would with a regular trailer, but I'm going to, as you can see right there, I just kind of put it on there like a chunk maybe, and I'm going to pull that, that feathers back. And if you really look at it, it's extremely versatile and it looks very cool. Um, it definitely would, you know, just by looking at it, you already know it's going to catch fish. These legs are going to move around. It's going to create a, a uh, movement, almost like a, a crawdad or a minnow, something moving uh, it, it, that's going to create a silhouette, like I said before. And the color that I've chosen really shows out in low light conditions, believe it or not. Um, sapphire blue is the color that the, this um, uh, chunk is in, and it's just a deep purple, almost like a Halloween purple that the jig is in. And a couple things that I have to tell you about working this lure is what you want to do is you want to find a deep point, something like uh, 30 to 25 feet deep where there's brush piles, somewhere where the bass you know are going to hang out. Um, choose a time of day that they're going to bite. Smallmouth tend to bite at night better than the hot season of summer depending on where you are. Tennessee, it gets, it gets up to 98 degrees and 88 degrees at night. So these fish are going to be pretty active during the night more than they are during the day. And they're going to be a little bit deeper. They're not going to be up in the water column. So it's going to be easier to get them actually. And what you want to do is you want to cast this down here. Usually the equipment that I, I prefer is a 7 foot, 7 half foot uh, medium rod to medium heavy with a uh, 20 pound uh, braid is going to be really sensitive because these fish are just going to lightly peck it and uh, some of the biggest fish are just going to tap it lightly and this is really a well-known technique uh, for clear water fishing for smallmouth and largemouth. 
Uh, one of my personal favorites for clear water deep, deep clear water lakes is using top water. A lot of people think you've got to get deep during the uh, deep deep water areas, when, especially when it's hot. That's the exact opposite. When it gets hot out, the water temperature is going to raise, and when the when the, when it gets actually deeper, there's a lack of oxygen. If you guys ever studied um, lakes and how they are handled during the summertime, whether it be algae, the algae bloom comes on during the summertime. You guys probably know a little bit about oxygen de oxygen depletion, and oxygen depletion occurs in the summertime when it's really hot in deep water. So the bass are actually going to go up on the water level where it's like two to three feet of water in a uh, 14 foot uh, depth range. So it's going to be a deep water, but they're going to be hanging out in three to two feet of water because they need more oxygen. You know, it's a, it's a survival, it's a comfort. Even though it's hot, they, they got to find some way to survive. And uh, usually they'll hang out under trees to prevent getting hit from the sun. It's going to be a little bit hotter uh, once you just sit on the middle of the lake. But what I like to do is I like to take a walk, a walk the dog type of lure, just like this one. This is a Rapella um, sub walk, or just a walk, walk and lure. And uh, just walk this across the uh, the surface, and it gets the bass attention. Even though they're not up there to feed, they're up there to be comfortable, and they see this easy meal, and they'll take it. Uh, again, poppers are really good for smallmouth in, in in the hot season. Nine to ten feet of water is great lure to fish, uh, believe it or not. And don't just think the fish are going to be deep when you're fishing in deep sorts of water. Before I end this episode of fishing in the Midwest, I'd like to talk about how I learned these techniques and who taught me. When I was down in Dale Hollow, I took a trip on down to One Stop Lure Company, and that's where they make the Punisher Lures. Stephen Hedrick, who is the owner of Punisher Lures, started to talk to us and talk to me about how it's important to learn how to fish clear water deep lakes. When you fish murky, shallow water lakes all your life and you come to a situation or a lake like Dale Hollow, which is one of the best places to catch smallmouth in the U.S., you won't get one fish into your bag because you don't know how to put the same tactics to what you were fishing in shallow water murky lakes, that's not going to mix. It just won't happen. You've got to know the versatile and finesse techniques. So today, I thank Stephen Hedrick and Greg, who took us out in the lake at Dale Hollow at night to catch some trophies, smallmouth, and to teach us some of the techniques that we did today. He was the one who taught me how to use this pig and jig right here, and I appreciate those two for teaching me, and I'd like to teach you guys. Hope you guys stay tuned and enjoy our next episode of Fishing the Midwest.